This week on Inside Oswego Speedway, we recap the Best Western Plus Quality Inn and Suites and You Pull You Save Auto Parks Spring Championship. From last Saturday night at the Speedway, and we'll start off with small block super modified qualifying heats, and right away, in heat number one on lap number one, Steve Apt in the 4.7s Motorsports car number 67 ran into issues in corner number two with a cut right front tire on that machine. On the restart, the number 99 of Dennis Rupert would lead the field back to green ahead of Mike Bond in the 74, Mike Bruce in number 22, and the 5 of Tim Guru. Now, Rupert driving the 99 is behind the wheel of a brand new FFB racing chassis this season at the Speedway and was clearly making strides early on in the day as he and Bond check out in front ahead of Guru, who now moves up into position number 3 with Steve App battling the 22 of Bruce into the third corner. However, Bond would not wait long. He dove to the inside to take the race lead into corner number one. And Bond, the three-time small block super modified track champion at the Speedway, would go on to collect his third heat race win of the year, getting the checkered flag in qualifying heat number one. Heat race number two saw a great battle from start to finish with the 01 of Dalton Doyle, the 93 of JJ Andrews, and the 91 of Barry Kingsley. Doyle would go on to get his first qualifying heat race win of the season in that brand new Hawk Jr. Fabrication Small Block Super Modified. Qualifying heat number three, Mark Castiglia in the 69 and Anthony Lacerdo when the one machine would start from the front row. Castiglia would move to the early race lead. Lacerdo would get shuffled back to position number four as Jason Simmons and John Tessarario would make the inside moves into corner number three. Later on, though, Simmons would run out of trouble out of corner number four. Craig Harris would catch the back of the nine of Jack Patrick and then careen across the racetrack into the side of the 98 of Simmons. Both of those cars would be done for the remainder of this heat race. When the race went back to green, it was Jack Patrick in the Longley Brothers Dodge, car number nine, moving to the low side to take the lead in qualifying heat number three. Patrick would go on to the victory, his second heat race win of the year. In Novella Super Modified action, this heat race two would see trouble on the first corner as the 05 of Jeff Abel gets turned around in corner number two. A complete double file restart would see Tim Devendorf in the five machine blast out into the early race lead ahead of the nine of Stephen Joy, the 22 of Lavery, the 83 of Lou LeVay Jr., and the 50 of Dave Gruel, who would find the inside down the back straightaway, bringing Ray Graham along with him in that brand new extreme chassis, car number 90. Lavery would continue his moves through the field, next pulling to the inside of Joy into corner number one to take over the runner-up spot, and Gruel as well again would follow the number 22 machine down the back chute and into that third corner to move up and into position number three. Three. Out in front, though, it was all Tim Devendorf in the Manth Brown L car number five, his second consecutive Novella Super Modified Heat Race victory of the season over Lavery, Gruel, and Graham. Heat race number two would see Jessica Zemkin start from the pole position ahead of Brian Sweeney in the number three machine and the 52 car of David Danzer, who made repairs to that machine after his incident in the Jim Champagne Memorial just one week ago, battling to the outside of Sweeney for the runner-up spot out of corner number four. Danzer would chase Zemkin down, but was unable to make a move as Jay-Z would also go on to her second consecutive heat race win at the Speedway ahead of Danzer, Sitterly, and Sweeney. The third and final Novella Super Modified Qualifying Heat Race saw Michael Muldoon in the 51 and Rapid Randy Ritzkis in the Lock Racing number 37. Starting from the front row in this qualifying heat with Joe Gosick and Michael Barnes in the Sorella Racing 68 filing ahead of Keith Champagne and Tim Snyder. Barnes in the 68 would be on the move early on in this one, slicing to the inside of Gosick out of corner number four to take the third spot into turn number one. But up front, the battle would wage on between Muldoon, Richkis, and Barnes, and it was once again Muldoon pulling on to victory. He too had damage to that car after an incident at the Speedway last Saturday night, but the team was able to get it repaired and back to the Steel Palace in time for racing last Saturday. We'll be back with more right after this with our Small Block Super Modified feature highlights. Central New York's fastest racing action continues in the month of June. Saturday, June 7th, it's the opening round of the Shea Concrete Steel Palace Isma Super Series at Oswego Speedway. Presented by North Country Home Builders. See the cars and stars of the Isma Super Modified Series circle the Steel Palace at over 140 miles per hour. Plus, the road to the championship continues for the Pathfinder Bank SBS Series. It's the Steel Palace Isma Super Series. Saturday, June 7th, kids 16 and under free. 
The Pathfinder Bank Small Block Super Modifieds would kick off the Spring Championship feature action last Saturday night with the 99 of Dennis Rupert and the 01 of Dalton Doyle bringing the field to green down the front straightaway. Mark Castilia riding right there in third. Look at Mike Bruce on the outside of the speedway trying to make it three wide with the 93 of J.J. Andrews and the 76 of Scott Schaefer. He was unable to make that move stick early on as Tim Garou in the five machine would slide up and into the top five down the front straightaway. But just a couple laps later, Bruce began to make his march through the field, diving to the inside of Garou into corner number three to take over that position as they continue to battle two by two further on back through the field. Up front, Bruce would continue his march, this time working to the outside of the racetrack on the 01 of Dalton Doyle. Bruce in the 22 passed multiple cars on the high side, now would move up into that third spot behind Castilia and Rupert out in front as they tuck in the line, working through and out of corner number two. Once again, two by two further back, J.J. Andrews, Tim Garou, John Tesserario, and Alex Hogue in the 73. Garou would get a little crossed up, coming out of corner number two and would actually ride the wall down the back straightaway. That would bring caution lights on and slow the field. As you get another look at the replay here, working down the back shoot, the five and the 73 come together and Garou goes up that back straightaway wall. He was able to restart and rejoin the field. On the restart, the 99 of Rupert had an issue, a big one going into corner number three as he clocks the wall into that third corner after leading 13 or 14 laps of that main event. Was a great day going for Rupert, but unfortunately, he would be done for the night. The driver was okay. Back under green, Alex Hogue works to the inside of J.J. Andrews, but it stacks up further behind as the 74 of Bond spins, and multiple cars get collected behind, including Jesse Barrett, Greg O'Connor, Cameron Black, Tim Garou, and Craig Harris. When they went back to green, Bruce would again find the outside of the speedway on lap number 16, working to the top side out of corner number four, and Mike Bruce in the Bruce Electric car number 22, looking for his first career, Pathfinder Bank SBS victory would jump out in front ahead of Castilia. Working through the field now out of corner number two, the number nine of Jack Patrick would work his way up through the pack in that Mopar powered machine working to the outside of Andrews into corner number three as Bond tries to follow suit in the number 74. Later on, Tesserario and the Canale Insurance number 47 would run into trouble, clocking the inside hub rail in corner number two, knocking him out of the event. And on the restart, they would file down into corner number three. Mike Bruce would end up leading the rest of this event to go on to collect his first career Pathfinder Bank small block super modified victory at Oswego Speedway ahead of Castilia, Doyle, Hogue, and Andrew Shartner, your series point leader in the top five, Mike Bond would come home in position number six as Bruce comes down to Turning Stone Resort Casino Victory Lane for the first time in his career. <laughs> the car just works. I mean, I, I don't know how else to explain it. The car just works on the outside. It sticks. Uh, and it just goes. It's got the Morrison power behind it, and it just sticks and it goes. It's great. I love it. Absolutely love it. Best car I've ever had here at the Speedway. Well, the first two weeks we just we had fast cars. We just always came in proud or came in trouble and whatnot. And uh, this is my first win at the Swiggle Speedway. It's been four years. I felt like I was going to be Jason Simmons. You know, seven years working butt off for years and years and years. And uh, we finally got it. You know, I can't say thanks enough to the Haggerty. Uh, we purchased a car, great car from Robbie Pullen. Um, all my sponsors, Woodchuck Saloon. My fans up there in, in turn one, they support me every week. Um, FFB race chassis, uh, zinc ink shirts, pilot pits, uh, Bruce Electric. There's probably a hundred of them that I'm forgetting. Um, Shane and George up in the tower for sponsoring the Speedway tonight. Um, my dad, my brother, my mother, my sister, my Uncle Bob, my Aunt Patty in the stand. Um, all my crew guys, you know, we, we wrecked in the heat race. We did a lot more damage than it looked like. My guys busted their butt. They do for me every single week, you know, at the track, in the shop. I can't say enough about the group guys I'm with. It's awesome. Uh, ride it out. We were uh, battling back and forth there. Congrats to him. Uh, it's been a while. You know, it's his first win. Um, we had a couple of, uh, you know, bumper tag moments, but I uh, two to go, I, he kind of washed up in three, and I wish I was there to pounce on it, and I, I thought I would have had him, but I, I wasn't close enough, so. Tough break, but second's good to me. Oh, a lot better tonight than I have uh, last week. Uh, we've been making gains little by little, just uh, new, car, uh, new car issues, you know? It's been really, really, really tight, and it started off the future really tight, and Bruce got 
right around the outside. I mean, if I tried racing him, we would have both went in the fence. So I gave him the room, and uh, seemed like the more the race went on, the car started getting better. But I'm happy with it. I mean, this is the first feature we've run with the thing, and stayed in one piece. So Andrew Shartner continues his lead in the series standings over Mike Bond, Jack Patrick, Mike Bruce now all the way up into position number four, and Steve Amp rounds out the top five. Central New York's fastest racing action continues in the month of June. Saturday, June 7th, it's the opening round of the Shea Concrete Steel Palace Isma Super Series at Oswego Speedway, presented by North Country Home Builders. See the cars and stars of the Isma Super Modified Series circle the Steel Palace at over 140 miles per hour. Plus, the road to the championship continues for the Pathfinder Bank SBS Series. It's the Steel Palace Isma Super Series. Saturday, June 7th, kids 16 and under free. The Spring Championship Nightcap last Saturday night featured the 25-car, 50-lap Novella Super Modified Main Event with Michael Muldoon and Tim Devendorf leading the field to green. Devendorf in the five machine would leap out into the early race lead and check away down the back straightaway as the field files down that back stretch and into corner number three as Michael Barnes and Joe Gozik continue their battle from the heat race. Lap number two issues early on. Brian Sweeney in the CNY CPR car number three machine would swap ends into corner number one and the rest of the field would stack up behind including the zero of Tim Snyder, the four of Bob Reese and the 05 of Jeff Abold. All cars would restart in this one. When we went back to green flag racing, Devendorf would continue out in the lead, but it was rapid. Randy Ritzkis and the Lock Crane Services number 37 machine diving into the runner-up position underneath of Muldoon with Zemkin and Lavery running further behind. Back in the field, the 68 of Michael Barnes, his first full feature event in the Sorrell Racing number 68, and he was the show from further back in the field, trying to work his way underneath the 11 of Zemkin and the 22 of Lavery. He would have to hold off and try it again later on in this one. Meanwhile, out in front, Devendorf slips a little bit high in lap traffic. That leaves the inside lane open for Ritzkis, who passes three cars down the front straightaway, including the lappers of Jeff Abold and the 83 of Lou LeVay Jr. As Ritzkis continues to work his way through traffic, you see further back, the five of Devendorf washes high as the 11 of Zemkin and the 68 of Barnes work their way to the low side. Michael Muldoon is now up into the runner-up position as Pat Lavery tries to battle the five of Devendorf down the back stretch as well. He too would make the inside lane stick into corner number three. Muldoon, Zemkin, Barnes in that order. Keep an eye on Barnes now. He works to the outside and slices to the outside of Zemkin into that first corner as they work down the back stretch. Barnes would next chase down the runner-up car, the 51 of Muldoon, looking to make the inside move stick down the front straightaway. However, Barnes would make contact. You can see the right front wing now on the Sorrell Racing number 68 is damaged, and he would not be able to keep pace for the rest of the event in this one as Ritzkis and Muldoon would now pull away from Barnes out in front. Further on back in the field, Pat Lavery was finally able to make the outside move on Zemkin to move up into position number four. As you notice, the seven of Otto Sitterly now working up close to the top five. But yellow lights would come on one more time. This time, it was the 52 of David Danzer, the 26 of Sean Goslin, and the 55 of Keith Champagne, who would go for a wild ride up and over the top of the 26 of Goslin, Champagne and Goslin would obviously be done for the remainder of the event, but both drivers were A-OK. -okay. Danzer was able to restart in the Danzer Racing number 52. Green lights back on on the speedway, and Sitterly would continue his patented late race charge now in the GNI Homes car number seven machine, pulling first to the low side of the 22 of Lavery into corner number three as they continue to work around the speedway. Next, he would pull to the inside of the 68 of Barnes out of corner number two. Sitterly now up into position number three, but it was late in the going. He would try his best to chase down the 51 of Muldoon and the 37 of Ritzkis, but out in front, moving to his 10th super modified win at Oswego Speedway, it was Randy Ritzkis giving Ken Lock and Lock Racing their first Oswego Speedway victory as car owners. Michael Muldoon crossed the line in second ahead of Otto Sitterly, Michael Barnes and Pat Lavery in the top five. Jessica Zemkin would hang on for her second consecutive top 10 finish at the Speedway ahead of Tim Devendorf. Joe Kosick and Dave Gruel as Randy Ritzkis pulls the Turning Stone Resort Casino victory lane. 
to the joys of his crew, including Johnny Ricicci and Ritzkis, would climb out of the roller cage here and chase down Ken Locke in the infield as tears of joy would flow as Ken Locke is now a main event winner at Oswego. I don't have any rear view mirrors. I have no idea. I just go by the, the photographers usually. If they're taking a picture of me, somebody's getting close. But this guy asked me to drive this year. Isn't that great? Yeah, just, <laughs> he wanted I to win. I want to thank everybody, you know. <laughs> I wish Jeff was here. Uh, we're going to come back next week, and we're going to win that one, too. <laughs> uh, it took all week. We had to get the motor out of it. Uh, we had to get a header made. Pretty much every panel on the car was bent, so it took all of all week, that's for sure. I was hoping I could catch up to him when he uh, caught up to the 56 there, and uh, he ended up going around him on the inside. I was hoping he'd give him a look to the outside, and maybe I'd be able to get under him. But uh, great run for Randy. Uh, it's good to have the car back in one piece. and. Get a podium finish. It was about the same as last week. Not bad. Just a little bit, a uh, little bit tight, but just traffic's tough. We had a couple guys there at one point and got called back because of a yellow, but it's all part of it. With the victory, Randy Ritzkis now moves up into the second position in the championship. 51 markers behind Otto Sitterly as Dave Gruel, David Danzer, and Pat Lavery round out the top five.